On Friday, December 17, 2010, President Obama signed into law an $858 billion tax cut package after receiving clearance from the U.S. House of Representatives. On Wednesday, the Senate overwhelmingly passed the legislation by an 81 to 19 vote, and on Thursday, the House approved the bill by a vote of 277 to 148 members. The Middle Class Tax Relief Act provides a two-year across-the-board extension of Bush-era tax cuts, a 2% rollback of Social Security payroll taxes, extends unemployment insurance for 13 months, and brings back the estate tax at 35% for two years on estates of more than $5 million. The bill also ensures that tax rates won't rise on almost all Americans on January 1, 2011. Prior to signing the bill into law, President Obama spoke about the importance of this legislation to middle-class Americans, to stimulating the economy, and to job creation. First and foremost, the legislation I'm about to sign is a substantial victory for middle-class families across the country. They're the ones hit hardest by the recession we've endured. They're the ones who need relief right now. And that's what is at the heart of this bill. The Real News spoke to Tom Ferguson, senior fellow at the Roosevelt Institute, and asked him who he thinks benefits from this new law. The question here, who wins and who loses on this? I think it's real clear who, the, who actually wins. It's America's super rich, because the real issue was not whether there was going to be a tax cut for middle class and poorer Americans. The president favored that. The Democrats in Congress favored that. The remarkable thing here is uh, the president effectively dealt with the Republicans, undermined his own party, especially in the House of Representatives, and then awarded the tax break to the people who've garnered most of the uh, income in the United States, the increase in income in the United States over the last 10, 20, or even 30 years. That, so who won? The super rich. That's, that's obvious. Um, there, is a, there is something... There's about $60 billion worth of unemployment uh, compensation there. You know, that's got to help, sure, people who are unemployed. The striking thing here, though, you want to pay attention to is how the White House has just was so slow on this. They spent most of the year messing around on unemployment benefits. They didn't do anything. When they finally decided they were going to lose the election, they did an extension earlier. They only put the extension through to November 30th. That's why they had to do this again. A couple other striking things about this bill. I mean, they did chop Social Security, uh, the Social Security tax, for a couple of percent for a year. Now, that's a really interesting thing because what it's going to do is put them in the position as the tax goes back at the end of a year of opening themselves to the charge that they raised taxes in an election year. Uh, and, you know, my take is that that's going to make it hard to just let it go back up. And Social Security is not, as we've sometimes discussed on this program, in any real danger at all, not for decades. But it will make the short-run finances of Social Security look worse. My reading of this is the White House, in fact, is operating here to try to squeeze cuts in Social Security uh, either uh, – soon or in a year or so. I, I really think that this is an extension of the deficit commission politics uh, there. Now, it, it, in terms of, you know, do we get an economic stimulus? Yeah, we do. Uh, and, you know, as somebody who thinks we haven't had a big enough economic stimulus, I'd favor that. Here's the thing, though. If you're going to stimulate the economy, tax cuts are about the worst possible way to do it. In the end, it's going to be the unemployment compensation, uh, maybe the chop in the Social Security uh, tax itself, and maybe some of the uh, accelerated depreciation provisions and things like that. And Bill, it's not going to be... Um, the, most of the tax cuts are going to end up going to go to the super rich are going to be saved. Uh, it, it's, this is a lousy way to get a stimulus. I think the real value of this whole business is it shows you how cheap is all the talk about the deficit. Because two weeks ago, they were all talking about deficit, deficit, deficit. We got to cut it, blah, blah, blah. At you know, basically the first sign of a proposal from the Republicans, uh, the White House and the Republicans agreed to just let's just cut taxes. I mean, this shows the worthlessness of American political rhetoric, uh, and you know the startling fact that the White House didn't even make try didn't even try to make much of an argument uh, on this uh, in favor of a sort of traditional Democratic bill. Many members of the House who voted against the bill, such as Representative Anthony Weiner, expressed concern that President Obama and lawmakers will face enormous election year pressure in 2012 to extend the cuts again or to make them permanent.